Hi everybody, welcome to Mrs. Rashid Reads. Today we're reading a story about somebody called Nigel. Now, I don't want you getting any ideas because you are so excellent. This boy is called Naughty Nigel. He does some very silly things, makes some very bad choices. Don't you go getting any ideas because I know how well behaved you are. Naughty Nigel, here he is. Tongue hanging out, fingers wiggling in his ears. He's dipped the cat into a pot of paint. This is a book by Tony Ross. As you can see, green sticker here on the spine and you know what that means. This is a Premier's Reading Challenge book. Yes, you can add it to your list. Let's have a look at the blurb. Naughty Nigel pretends to be deaf so that he can play tricks on his parents. When told to get his hat, he settles down to paint the cat. When asked to wash the dishes, he washes the fishes instead. But Nigel is taught a lesson by a strange little man from Nightland who is similarly hard of hearing. A hilarious classic from the acclaimed Tony Ross. Poor cat here, Nigel's on a tightrope on that washing line and the cat looks so scared. I'll read it to you. Don't let it change your behaviour. Naughty Nigel. Nigel looking quite smug. Dad coming through the door. Tin of paint on top of the door. Naughty Nigel thought he could do anything he wanted. Whenever he was asked to do something he hated, he'd pretend not to hear properly. Then he would just do what he wanted. His parents thought he was trying to be good and that it was just that his ears didn't work very well. In the chimney here. And here's the doctor. The best head doctor in the world couldn't find anything at all wrong with Nigel's ears. This is the sort of thing Nigel did. On Monday, his father asked him to wash the dishes. Yes, Dad, said Nigel. Away he went and nobody saw him again until the evening. When Nigel came into the kitchen to give the cat its supper, his father asked about the dishes. Oh, said Nigel. I thought you said wash the fishes. That's what I've done, but they really weren't very dirty. Look at those fishes going round and round in the washing machine. He must be very frightened. Father felt very sorry for Nigel and that his ears didn't work properly. On Tuesday, Nigel had to go to the dentist who wanted to make a hole in his teeth and then fill it again. Get your hat, said mother, who was going to see him to the bus. After two hours searching, she found Nigel in an upstairs corner with his paints. Mother was cross because it was too late for the dentist and she shouted at Nigel, oh, I'm sorry, mum. He said, I thought you said paint the cat. Oh, that poor cat. I've never seen a cat with a mouth that wide. Oh, mum, horrified. No, mother felt very sorry for Nigel and his sleepy ears. Nigel was naughty on Wednesday and on Thursday and on Friday too. That was a lovely week. That's why Nigel's having fun. When asked to dust the stairs, he went to the zoo to bust the bears. Well, they were too big to bust, so he teased them terribly instead. He had lots of fun doing all his favourite bad things. All the time, the grown-ups said how sorry they felt because of his ears, and they gave him little presents. Little bear. What's this little mouse doing here with a cup of tea? On Saturday, Nigel went to play in the woods. His parents had told him be home by seven. Hmm, thought Nigel. I think I heard them say eleven. The middle of the night. So Nigel stayed out dreadfully late, so late that he began to doze under a tree. Then strange things began to happen. The trees about him seemed to move and change colour. Strange animals popped out of the ground and Nigel didn't know if he was awake or he was asleep. A strange little man came skipping along the path. The little man seemed friendly and he spoke in a squeaky voice. Hello, welcome to Nightland. This is where dreams come true. I'm in charge. He peeked into 
into a tiny red book. You're Nigel, yes. What would you like? Magic? Money? Wildest dreams? The little man seemed to be in a frightful hurry and his words tumbled out. Nigel was so surprised he couldn't even think of a single wish. The little man hopped from foot to foot. Hurry, hurry, boy, I haven't got all night. Mm -hmm. It's rather magical, doesn't it? Still, it was a chance too good to miss, and Nigel blurted out the first thing that came into his head. Um, uh, I wish, I wish I had a, a golden rose. There was a puff of striped smoke, and something happened. Nigel had a huge golden nose. It was so huge, he could see it without a mirror, and it was extremely heavy. The little man listened to Nigel's wails. Oh, I'm sorry, he murmured. I thought you said a golden nose. Never mind. You may have that wish again. This time Nigel knew exactly what to wish for. I wish my nose was the way that it was before. Granted, said the little man. Nigel touched his nose. It was still long and glossy, but then he noticed his feet. What have you done? He shrieked. I wanted my nose to be the way it was before. The little man <laughs> frowned. Oh, I'm so sorry, he said sadly. I thought you said you wanted your toes to cover more of the floor. Oh, never mind, you can have that wish again. Nigel stared at his monstrous feet over his golden nose and said carefully, I wish my feet were just an ordinary pair. Nigel watched his feet and to his horror, they began to turn brown and hairy. What's happening? He sobbed. All I wanted was a pair of ordinary feet. Pair? Smiled the man. Sorry, I thought you said bear. Never mind, you can have that wish again. Not likely, gasped Nigel through his tears. Things are getting worse and worse. Sobbing into his soggy brown fur, he fled blindly into the nightland forest. Nigel's learning his lesson. Nigel stumbled on, not noticing the way Nightland changed into the ordinary dayland he was used to. Dawn was just breaking as he arrived home. As quiet as a mouse, he crept into bed. He felt uncomfortable because his pyjamas didn't fit. Tucking his horrid golden nose under the blankets, he tried to sleep. All he could think about was what his friends would say when he went to school. How they would laugh at a bear with big feet and a long golden nose. The next morning, Nigel rushed to the mirror to find that he was his old ordinary self again. He was so happy. He spent the whole day doing not so very naughty things. In the afternoon, his father came into the garden where Nigel was playing circuses with the cat. Would you go to the orchard and collect some logs? asked father. Nigel had a wonderfully, gloriously interesting, naughty idea. He would pretend he thought his father said, collect dogs, and he would fill the garden with dogs for his circus. Yes, Dad, said Nigel. Maybe it wasn't after all. But Nigel did not collect dogs. He collected logs. He remembered his dream and didn't want to be mixed up with misunderstandings ever again. Was it a dream? It seemed awfully real at the time. Was it? Wasn't it? But you're trying to remember. He's got a couple of dogs here. He's collected the log instead. Naughty Nigel by Tony Ross. Don't forget, add it to your Premier's Reading Challenge list. <laughs>